So in our last tutorial, we spent a fair bit of time coding this update boxes function, but I realized that we actually, uh, what, what we're using to kind of run the solver is this check puzzle function, and we don't call update boxes in that check puzzle. Down here in check puzzle, uh, when we solve something, we update our Sudoku using the rows and columns, but then we also want to add in our update boxes function right underneath it. So just a quick little change there. I don't know how much it changes with what's getting solved, but that definitely needs to be in there. Okay, so let's let's take a look at where we are. We make our program. This is where we're at with our uh, our solving. So let's take a look at, uh, we, we figured a few extra spots out. We've actually solved this entire row, which is pretty cool. But uh, what's, what's the next step? So I want us to look at this uh, middle top box here. And you can see that there's four, five zeros, so five empty spaces. And this box is miss, missing a one. So if we look at it, no ones can go in any of these two spaces because there's a one here, okay? Uh, likewise, there's a one in this column, so there cannot be a one here or here. Therefore, there's only one spot that this one can go, and that's right here. So how do we code that? Well, what we're gonna do is first we're going to, um, we're gonna loop through, we'll write a function that loops through each box, that checks each square, that goes through each square's possible arrays and see if within each box there's any number that can only go in one square. So in the case of this middle box here, top middle box, um, it would look at this number, it would say, can a one go here? No. Can, it go, can a one go here? No. Uh, there's a number here, so we're not even gonna look at it. Not gonna look at that, not gonna look at that. Can a one go here? No. Um, can I, not going to look at that. A one could go here, but a one can't go here. So our count of the number of squares that a one is possible to go within this box is only going to be one, and therefore we're going to put a one here. So that's the logic that we're going to code. And we are going to put it, we're going to make our call in our check puzzle function, and we will call it box singles, just for a, I don't really know if that's the proper Sudoku term, but that's what I'm going to call it. Now the argument side it's going to take is it's going to take the Sudoku puzzle, which is all the squares, but it's also going to have to take all of the boxes. So we can put uh, Sudoku here for now, but we actually don't have the boxes saved anywhere. Um, if you check our setup puzzle, it returns a triple pointer square. What we actually want is we want it to return something that gives us both the square triple pointer and the box double pointer. So that means we're gonna have to open up our .h file and do some do some stuff to get that, that working. So in our .h file, we're gonna make a new struct, call it type def struct, Sudoku, we'll just call it, because it's going to contain basically our entire game information. Sudoku. And it will contain a struct square triple pointer. Call it squares. And a struct box double pointer, which we'll call boxes. Okay, now in our create puzzle, instead of, oh, no, in our setup puzzle, instead of returning square triple pointer, we're just going to return a suit, this new struct single pointer. So that's setup puzzle. And then we're also going to write a new function called create sudoku, I guess. Let's call it sudoku. Uh, it returns a sudoku. Again, the struct we just set up. We'll call it create. Sudoku. 
So we'll just copy that. Uh, and it would, and it's going to, the arguments it's going to take is a square triple pointer puzzle, sure, and box double pointer boxes. Okay, so we'll code that in our Sudoku, in our puzzle.c. So return single pointer, create Sudoku. That's square triple pointer puzzle and box double pointer. Actually, let's just call this squares. That makes more sense. Sorry. Squares. And boxes. Okay, then we're going to create this Sudoku struct. So Sudoku star Sudoku. And we're going to malloc that. So Sudoku equals malloc size of Sudoku. And then we're just going to assign, make the assignment. So Sudoku squares equals squares and Sudoku boxes equals boxes. Squares, boxes, yep. Okay, and then we'll just return that Sudoku. So return Sudoku. Okay, so then in our setup puzzle, we want this to actually return that Sudoku. So Sudoku star star, and then for our return function, we're just going to return, well, we're gonna return that function that we just wrote. So return, and it's going to be, what do we call it again? Create Sudoku. So return, create Sudoku, and it takes in the Sudoku, which is the triple square pointer, and boxes, which is the double box pointer. Okay, so that just kind of, and the reason why we're doing that is I don't want to change any of this code. Like that'd be a nightmare. In our main then, instead of declaring a square up here, we're going to just declare a Sudoku, single pointer. And let's get rid of all these create puzzle or check puzzle ones. Uh, so now that Sudoku is equal set up puzzle, that works. And then Sudoku, this needs to now point to those squares. So we're passing at the same thing, just now contained in a struct. Okay, let's run that, see that, make sure it's working before we move on with the boxes. So make in function check puzzle undefined reference to box singles. Um, so we, let's just comment that out for now. Because we haven't written it yet, obviously. So clear, make, it works. Okay, good. So now in this box singles and in our check puzzle too, we want to pass it the box star star boxes and update that in our main as well. So that's going to be check puzzle Sudoku boxes. and update that in our dot h, our check puzzle function. So check puzzle. Good, now that should work. So when we call box singles, we'll also pass it that boxes. All right, let's write this box singles function. We'll write it in box.c. So box singles, it will return an int. And again, it takes the square triple pointer squares. We can actually call it Sudoku. Yeah, we'll call it Sudoku. And 
then box double pointer boxes. We're going to need three counter variables, so we'll just use i, j, and x. And we're going to need a counter variable, so int count, and that these are loop variables and this is just a counter variable. I know I think I called these counter variables, but you know, anyways. Um, okay, so we're gonna have a lot of for loops here. There's gonna be four, three for loops. First thing we're gonna loop through is the boxes. So let's just add a comment there. So loop through boxes. So this is gonna be i equals zero, i is less than nine, i plus plus. Okay, then we're gonna loop through we're going to loop through the possible array. So remember, if we look at this, when we're, when we're looking at this box, we're going to start with one and we're going to say, can one go here? And then we're going to go to this, uh, this square and say, can one go here? Then we're going to go to two and re-loop through the squares. So we're looping through the boxes, then the, the possible array or the numbers, and then the squares. Okay, so loop through possible array. So for, oops, for j equals zero, j is less than nine, j plus plus. All right. Now we're trying to keep track of the number of times that a given number can appear in the box. So in this example, it's one. And so can one appear here? No. So it's equal to zero, 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 one, one. Okay. And then that's how we know that a one can go into this spot. Uh, and then let's, let's use seven as an example where we don't know that. So can seven go here? Yes, seven can go here. Okay, so one. Can seven go here? Yes, seven can go here. So two, our count is at two. Therefore, we know that at this point in time, seven is unsolvable for this box, right? Because it, it can go here or it could go there. Okay, so that's where this count variable comes in. And it starts, it initializes at zero. So we're going to set a count equals zero. Okay, now we loop through the squares. So loop through squares. And that's going to be our x. So for x is equal to zero, x is less than nine, x plus plus. Now the first thing we want to do is if the square that we're looking at has a number, we just we want to exit this, uh, we want to go to the next square. So we're going to, we're going to say that he here by if, oh boy, where are we here? If boxes, because we're looping through the boxes, so boxes i, and then squares x, number is not equal to zero, or if it has a number, then we're just going to go to the next iteration of the loop. So that's continue, continue. Oops. Okay, so we'll just exit there if the square has a number. We don't wanna look at any more at it, but if it is a zero, then what we wanna do is we will want to say, can the current number that we're looking at fit into it? So if, if boxes squares x possible, remember that array of possible, yeah, I'm tired of talking about that, <laughs> um, j, if that's equal to zero, 
Then we found a square that the number we're looking at can fit into. So this count goes up by one, okay? Now, if count is ever equal to zero, or equal to two, I should say, then if count is equal to two, then we know we've, we've kind of hit a point where we know that that number is unsolvable for that box. So what we want to do is we just want to break out of the loop. We don't want to continue. So we'll just break there. Okay. Now the alternative to that is when we're completely done the loop, we want to check if count is equal to one. Because if count is equal to one, then there's a square. If count is equal to one, it's solvable, right? We've gone through the entire box. You know, we've looked at this number, this number, this number, that number, that number, that number. And we've determined that for whatever number we're looking at, there's only one possible place for it to go. Therefore, that number must go there, right? That's just, that's good logic. So if count is equal to one, we're going to want to stick it in that box that we found it, uh, the, we found it could go. So what that means is we are going to want to save that square. So how we're going to do that is we're going to use a temp number. So int temp and temp at this point will equal X. Okay. So we're going to say that we found, we incremented count and then we're going to save where we found that open spot. So temp is equal to X. Okay. So there's a saving that square that we know the, the spot can go in and well, we've solved that square now, so we'll just solve it. So boxes i squares x, remember x is the square that we saved, number is equal to, and it's going to equal, remember this j is going through the possible array, so uh, j is starting here, it's looking at zero or one, you know, it's zero based. So it's looking here, 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 here. So we can use that as our number. So our number is going to be J plus one, J plus one. So that's our number. And then our unsolved gets decremented by one. That's that global variable and boxes. I squares um, at, sorry, this is not, this isn't supposed to be X. This is supposed to be temp. Sorry. So that's squares temp squares temp. And we're going to say solvable is equal to zero because it's been solved then we're going to want to, since we've solved that number, like if let's say we find out that a one, it does need to go here. Well, then we know now that a one can't go anywhere on this column and anywhere uh, on this row. So that could be useful information for other checks. So we're going to update all these numbers here that a one can't go here and a one can't go here. And also of course, a one can't go anywhere in this box, but I mean, we, we already know that. So that's actually, yeah, we actually don't need to call that. Uh, I was going to call update boxes as well as uh, update Sudoku, but we don't, we don't actually need to do that. Uh, just because by how this, how we found out, how we solved this number, just, it wouldn't make any sense. So anyways, um, so this is row. So that's going to be boxes square temp row remember we saved that a long long time ago for just a time as this column okay so i think that's pretty much it um yeah that should uh 
that should update things. So let's um, let's oops. So let's run through this and see if it has. Um, remember, this is the the example spot, so it should solve this spot, if not a few other ones. So let's clear it, make it, and hey, look at that! A one shows up. So that's good. That's that's good. I wasn't expecting it to work the first time. Um, and then again, if we kind of run check puzzle a few times, we might even solve a few more numbers. Uh, yep. So if you look down here now, we've uh, we've solved a few more. So we're getting closer. You know, we're we're doing pretty well. Yeah. I think a few more tricks and we'll have this puzzle solved. As always, the code has been posted, so check out the description of this video if you want to check it out that way.